So my friend died yesterday. Her name was Anya and she was in her late 60s and she got lung cancer about a year ago and uh, she just lives down the street from me. So now because of the pandemic we're not able to have an in-person memorial or celebration of life or any type of gathering and I've been wondering how to say goodbye to someone she was like a soul sister to me, someone I love, without going to actually honor her in person. And I know because we've been dealing with this pandemic for months now, um, and my father-in-law actually died in mid-March, so right as soon as it was coming into Canada. So we weren't able to have a, the typical or a traditional funeral for my father-in-law either. But that, at least we were able to have a little family gathering. This is going to be much different. Like, I'm not going to be able to say goodbye to Anya in any way or express my condolences to her family because of uh, just the way things are right now. So I thought that I would share what is helping me get through this time because I know I'm not alone. I know that there are a lot of people who are losing people that they love. And even if it's a non-pandemic time, sometimes somebody you love dies and you're not able to go to the funeral, the memorial, or the celebration of life. So this is what I've chosen to do. And I'm hoping it's just three ideas. And actually it includes reading through Psalm 23. First I'll share three tips and then I'm gonna read through um, a passage of scripture. And I'm also gonna share how it's helping me grieve and cope when I can't go and say goodbye to Anya in person. The first thing I realized is that I'm gonna have to say goodbye to Anya and to her presence in our neighborhood and my life in a way that's different than I expected. So it's not gonna be a memorial or I don't even know if they're gonna have an online thing, but it's just gonna be different. So I'm gonna say goodbye, but just not the way that I wanted to or I hoped to. So for me, because she lives so close, she just lives down the street. Yesterday, what I did, yesterday was the day she died, I just stood outside of their house um, for a while and, and sort of prayed. And I wished I had a candle, but I didn't. But that was really, I found that really helpful. And there was some sort of some smoke coming out of their chimney. So pretty sure someone was home and it just felt like I was more present there. And I was able to say goodbye in a quiet way, even though I wasn't able to actually um, offer condolences in person. So if you're having to say goodbye to someone that you love and you can't be there to do it in person and you can't be with friends or family, I encourage you to find some way that you can say goodbye on your own. And it's not gonna be what you expect, but it still can be life-giving. It still can be honoring to the person that you lost and it can still be healing for you. So maybe this means um, doing something similar to what I did, is just going somewhere. It doesn't have to be to their house, especially if you don't live close by, but going somewhere and just holding them in memory and in prayer for a few minutes or maybe an hour for as long as it takes. Or it could be going out for coffee with someone and just saying, can I just talk about this person that died um, for the next hour or 10 minutes or can I just tell you everything that I remember whatever comes to you that sort of symbolizes your relationship with that person go there and maybe do it more than once maybe I'll find myself out in front of Anya's house um, it, today <laughs> later on today or or periodically through um, the next few months or years hi Georgie I'm kind of in the middle of something right now. I'm trying to say goodbye. Okay. <laughs> the second thing that I realized in not being able to say goodbye to Anya in person is that I'm never actually really alone. I have a strong, deep faith in God, and so did Anya, actually, and a deep sense of spirituality. And um, I know that even though I feel like I'm alone in her grief, my grief for losing her, I'm not actually alone. Even if you don't have a relationship with God or you don't believe, I encourage you to still sit in silence with your own spirit, heart, and soul and just give yourself time 
just to be with the pain and the grief. Just give yourself time to sit and allow memories to come through. Allow yourself to cry, allow yourself to rage, just be. And maybe you just wanna zone out and you just wanna lie there and stare at the ceiling. I get it. When my grandma died, that's all I could do was sleep. I just slept for all the time. I don't feel that way this time. I feel more like I want to do something creative to honor, honor Anya, especially because she was actually a very creative woman. She, um, she painted landscapes, and I like to paint as well. And she didn't like to spend a lot of time with people. She was very introverted, and she loved her solitude, and I love my solitude too. So was, we did spend time together, but it was, it's funny because both of us would just be like, we'd rather be alone in our togetherness than together together, if that makes sense. So now when I sit and I am alone and quiet, I feel like I'm, I can easily honor her memory because I know that's what she loved to do too. So I encourage you just to sit and reflect on the person that you lost and allow the pain to... Um, wash through you because it will heal you. The third thing that um, I want to share with you is Psalm 23 because it's a passage that has been coming up to me ever since uh, Anya died and actually even before she died. I just want to read it through three times and the first time I'll just read it through fairly quickly just normally and the second time I'll read it through and just share a couple things that stood out to me. And the third time, I'll read it through a little slower. And I encourage you just to listen to what God is saying to you. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. So this time I want to read through it and just share a couple things that stood out to me. And while I'm doing this, think about what stands out to you and how it might help you in your grief. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters and he restores my soul. And for me, as an introvert who loves the solitude, I can just totally imagine myself lying down in green pastures and just being and walking beside the still waters and having my soul and my heart and my spirit restored, even in the midst of grief. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And what strikes me about that is that suddenly the psalmist, which could have been David, I think it is a psalm of David, um, suddenly started talking to God. So instead of saying, the Lord is my shepherd, talking about the Lord separately, he's now talking directly to God. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And for me, my rod and my staff, it means just the spirit. It's just the comfort and the joy and the spirit, the, the peace that I feel when I sit with God in silence. So that for me is a rod and staff, but for you it could be something totally different. And that's the idea of this kind of reading through scripture is um, what does it mean to you? How do you envision it? And can, does it bring you comfort? And if so, how? In this, the psalmist is alone, like we are alone in our dark valleys. Even if we were at a funeral, we would still be grieving and mourning in our own way. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And for me, my enemies are fear, self-doubt, criticism, unhealthy patterns, unhealthy beliefs, lies. 
So you prepare a table before me in the presence of those enemies. You anoint my head with oil, which is a blessing, and my cup overflows, which is abundance and joy and gratitude for all the stuff that we have. And I don't mean physical stuff. I mean breath, heartbeats, one more day to be alive. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. And what stood out to me was this last, uh, those last four words, my whole life long. Anya died. The person that you love died. But we still have life left. And part of living is honoring the people who've gone before us by living fully, deeply, and madly. And not allowing the pain and the darkness and, and the sickness of grief to hold on to us too long. It's important to grieve, it's important to cry and lament and remember and mourn, but it's also important to remember that we have a whole long life ahead of us. We have right now, and that's what we need to hold on to. So I'm going to read through Psalm 23 one more time. I just encourage you to maybe close your eyes and just be with it and just... Enjoy the presence of God and allow healing to come into your heart. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Amen. That's in memory of Anya, who died yesterday. And may it be in memory of the person that you loved and lost. Take good care of yourself, for you are worth taking good care of. Mwah. Goodbye, Anya. Your spirit, heart, and soul lives on now and forevermore. And I can't wait to see you again one day.